464x that basically is a combination of stateless and stateful translation. So the CLAT, which you can see on the left, that's our CPE. So the CLAT or the client side translator does stateless IPv4 to IPv6 translation, while the PLAT, which is the NAT64 device, does stateful IPv6 to IPv4 translation and vice versa. So the PLAT or the provider side translator is just a NAT64 device. That is no other special config is done on it. In this demonstration, the PLAT is already configured. We did this in the previous video and you can watch that video to see how and follow the configuration steps. This demonstration focuses on configuring the CLAT, which in our case is running an open source stateless IP ICMP translator called Joule. So we'll start by doing some verification. I'm going to start a packet capture between my CPE on the CLAT and my NAT64 device, which is the PLAT. And then we'll do some verifications from the Windows host. So remember, I already configured my web server, www.example.com. So let us try to access the web server via DNS and it works so let's go back and check the packet capture and we can see that we sent out a query www.example.com then we get a response for the a and also the quad a record so this time round if you remember in my previous video my windows host was ipv6 only but in this scenario it's dual stacked so that's why we get back the ipv4 address and also the ipv6 address for the ipv6 address is the synthesized ipv6 address then communication happens over ipv6 because remember my connection between the cpe and the nat64 device is v6 only so we're going to use ipv6 But if I try to access the same server, so this is just simulating uh, the use of IPv4 literals. So if I try to access the same server via IPv4, it's not going to work. Because remember, NAT64 relies heavily on DNS and DNS64, right? So if you're not using DNS, it means that the application is not going to work. We're not going to have connectivity. So our goal is to enable the CLAT, the client-side translator, which will handle the translation of IPv4 to IPv6. And the NAT64 device will handle the translation of IPv6 to IPv4. To do that, let us go ahead and configure our CLAT, which is running Joule, an open source implementation. I'm going to leave the links in the description of the video so that you can be able to access and configure uh, Joule. First thing that we're going to do is to enable Joule. In my case, I've already set up Joule. So there are some steps that you need to follow before you get to this point. So after enabling Joule, the next thing that we need to do is to set up an instance and give it a name. So my instance is called Soze and specify whether you're going to use NetFilter or IP tables. So I'm using NetFilter because uh, it's pretty straightforward, but you can decide whether to use NetFilter or IP, IP tables. The key thing to note is NetFilter is pretty aggressive in terms of translation. Everything is translated. The next thing that I'm going to do is to enable the explicit address mapping table whereby I'm saying I have this prefix 2001db8bf colon 1 colon colon slash 120 is going to be mapped to this IPv4 address which is what is configured on my Windows host. So because the IPv4 address is a slash 24, that's why we're using a slash 120. We're just picking the last eight bits and appending them to this prefix, uh, the slash 120.
So this is going to be our source IPv6 address when you're doing the translation. So remember packet, v4 packet hits the CPE what you're configuring right now, Joule. And then the v4 packet is going to be translated. We translate the headers, we translate the addresses. Then for the addresses, we're going to use this slash 120 and append the IPv4 address. So that's the source address. If I show the explicit address and mapping table, we have our IPv6 prefix and the IPv4 prefix. So this is for the source address. So take note of that. So for the destination, I'm going to use our, remember when you did NAT64, I'm going to use my network specific prefix because this prefix is going to be shared both on the CPE and also on the NAT64 device. So here I'm mapping the prefix to 000, 000 because remember for the destination address, you we're just mapping it to the whole IPv4 internet. Anyone might want to access any website, right? So for the destination address, we're going to use this, our network specific prefix and combine it with the destination IPv4 address. And when you display the mappings, so this is what we have. The slash 96 is for the destination address and then the slash 120, that's for the source address. And we'll see this in packet captures later. So let me just do a quick test uh, with the query and we'll see what happens. So basically the query will just give you, you enter an IPv4 address and it gives you a corresponding IPv6 address based on your, what you've configured. So just did a small mistake here. Let me make the correction. Yeah, so I need the default uh, instance. So let me go ahead and enable that in June. So remember I had my initial instance which had my EMT named Soze and then I need another default instance. So the key thing to note here is for the default instance, I'm not going to use it anywhere because I'm just specifying it and you will notice that I'm using the well-known prefix, right? So I'm just specifying it so that I can get uh, Joule to work. So let me run the query again to see what will be translated using the instance that I've specified. I think I have a mistake somewhere here. Let me just correct it. Yeah, I forgot the keyword address. So you can see that based on this address, which I'm querying based on my instance. So 192.0.0.2 is going to give me 2.0.0.1 db8 beef 1 colon colon 2. So you can see the process. We have our slash 120 combining it with the slash 24 prefix and then the addresses, the operation, you get the 002, combine it with the slash 120 to give you the v6 address. So yeah, I'll do the same thing with the destination IPv4 address and we get the IPv6 prefix to be used in the destination address. So let's go ahead and verify all this. First thing is we hope that it will work. Yes, now it works. Let's go into the packet captures and see what happened. So this is the packet capture between the CPE and the NAT64 device. So you see that we have the source address is colon colon 2, 
colon colon two, and then the destination address is the v4 address combined with the network specific prefix let me start another capture between the windows host and the cpe and also between s100 and s200 those are the two devices speaking bgp my nat 64 and also the router in s200 which is v4 only so if i look at between my NAT64 device and the router in S200, which is R4, you'll notice that we're using the pool of addresses. So the source address is 192.168.0.20, heading over to the server, 172.16.102. The capture between the Windows device and the sealer shows us the initial packet, which is untranslated. Let's do some verifications on a NAT64 device or the PLAT. First thing is to look at the dynamic mappings and we can see we are using the access list and the pool is used. So we use some addresses from the available pool. And then show NAT64 translations, we'll be able to see the translations between IPv4 to IPv6. In this demonstration, we looked at how to configure 464 XLAT, which is a combination of stateful and stateless translation. In this video, we looked at how to configure stateless translation to enable IPv4 only connectivity across an IPv6 only network by translating IPv4 packets to IPv6 and from IPv6 to IPv4. So I'd like to thank you for viewing and see you in the next video.